growing up, my teachers used to always tell me, Jay, you couldn't make it as a janitor on 9-11. My mom's was a drug addict. My pops was a dealer. Every single morning when she made ham and toast, my pops came in yelling and complaining and always wanted to hit her. You know, she would be, she would be, she, he would be fighting and saying things like, Cooking ain't gonna pay for half the shit you snorting. Go get on the block and sell something. Mostly it was her body. <laughs> yeah. It was rough, man. Mainly because my dad was the one with the car. Could you believe that? He'd make my mom walk almost two and a half miles to get onto that corner in the, ho in the hood, try to sell some seller pussy. Yeah, and the fucked up thing about it was he'd be driving me to school and it would be on the same direction as where my mom would go on. So, we'd be driving past her every morning. I'd see my mom walking, get it, getting ready to prostitute herself to make money for us. On, on rainy days, my dad would splash my mom driving by. I had two brothers, three sisters. We all lived in one bedroom apartment. You know, I'd, uh, I'd often sleep on the floor. We'd, we'd all kind of share the floor, me and my siblings. Uh, on nights when my parents were passed out from drinking, uh, we would often try to sneak out and go into the lobby, and that was the only time we'd get to sleep on a couch, sleep on the lobby's couch. No, it felt, it felt good, it felt great. Actually get something to sleep on instead of just a hardwood floor. You know, in school that wasn't really nothing, nothing spectacular. I hated math, hated science, geography, gym, art, music, but I did like English. Mainly what got me into English was this one teacher named Mrs. Dixon. You can say me and her spoke the same language. <laughs> yeah, she really took a liking to me. Back before it was wrong to sleep with your students, me and her would go at it as if we were two rabbits in mating season. What was important is that she got me interested in reading and writing. You know, she seen something in me and I in her. After the laws became a little bit tighter and probably from no help of me bragging to my friends and other staff and the parents, she ended, the police ended up apprehending her and she spent 10 years in state custody. <clears throat> yeah. So I had this consistent urge to write, but I didn't have no voice to back it up, you know? It wasn't until grade eight and in my intro to music is where I found my true passion. So it started with a rather racist instructor, Miss Whitey. You know, our neighborhoods were predominantly black, and uh, the kids would often skip classes like hers. Yeah, come to think about it, I always did something with an African vibe sung by white men. Yeah, my adolescent years didn't do my creative side any good. We was just some boys in the hood, up to no good. Whether we were robbing old Ling Ling's corner store for some candy, breaking into cars, selling those radios, or running a, a firearms trading network that linked weapons from El Salvador into the hands of an American teen. Yeah, it was just another day in the hood. I guess it all really changed when my brother came home one day and put a kilo of cocaine in my right hand and a 45 cal pistol in my left. I immediately dropped the gun, and I picked it back up as I am right-handed. Me and my brothers were flipping that drug like our lives depended on it. We would hit the block in shifts, you know, round the clock work. And if anyone felt like they could get away with Oz, get some free product or something, well, we would make an example of them. Shit, we'd set their house on fire. We'd, we'd take their kids. 
We would, we would beat the fuck out of these motherfuckers. We would tie them up. We would put them on the ne- very next day. The kidneys would be on the black market for sale. <laughs> Shit. We'd, when we would set their house on fire, we'd put the insurance to our name. It ain't nothing. Yeah, I took a man's life. I shot him. Put the gun to his head, point blank. Blow. My gun done went off. I watched his soul float away. Gave it to the Grim Reaper. Put his soul on death's doorstep. His soul was going to heaven's gates. Had to wait in line. A lot of deaths that day. After killing someone, you may think that there's guilt or there's a feeling of remorse or you could have done something different. Not me, man. My conscience was non-existent. (laughs) Come to think about it, I liked it. That's all bullshit what they say. Ain't no feelings in the hood. Love will get you killed. After I turned 21, I was making more money than I know what to do with, man. About two grand a week. And the government wasn't taxing any of it. I bought a 1968 Chevy Impala convertible. You know, with gold rims and an ice cream paint job that shined. (laughs) Every time it hit light. Yeah, shoot. There's only one thing to do after that. It's rap. (laughs) Thanks to my early days of banging Miss Dixon, I had a heavy grammar skill set that I could chillax on. And uh, seeing as how I was talking about what I was going through it was simple enough. I could just kind of do my thing rapping. Where's your father? So, my dad wasn't really ever around when I was growing up. I mean, he would come occasionally just to just to drive me to school every now and then. But emotionally, nigga was gone. Like where? He was gone, man. Where was he gone? Have you ever been with someone? in a party, and you're like, man, I'm, I know I came with this person, right? So you lost him at a party? No, but like, listen, just the stuff he was involved in versus what I was involved in means that we never even really seen eye to eye. My dad growing up, he never called me son. No. Never called me, he never said I loved you. Yeah. My dad called me bro. Mm. Treat me like a friend, you know? I get that. That's hard on a kid. 
And uh, how about your mother? Was your mother involved? My mom was a crackhead. Oh. So, are you helping her at all get off of her addictions and everything? <laughs> Listen, man. I'm gonna be honest. If I gave her twenty dollars right now, you know, for food, she would go down to this corner and go meet my dad and buy a, buy a twenty sack of crack. She'd get high. If I gave her anything else, she would just go get high. Are you helping her at all get off of her addictions and everything? <clears throat> Listen, man, I'm going to be honest. If I gave her $20 right now, you know, for food, she would go down to this corner and go meet my dad and buy a, buy a 20 sack of crack. She'd get high. If I gave her anything else, she would just go get high. But you could pay for, like, therapy and that kind of stuff as well. All that stuff doesn't work. Have you ever done crack? I've never done Let it. me tell you, it's amazing. You don't ever want to not do crack once you do crack. Trust me. Yeah. So, how much money do you make when doing the albums and everything? All in all, it's not a lot of money. I don't make a lot of money. The labels take a lot. I mean, my net worth mm -hmm. is like 30, 35 mil, but then the labels come and they take 30% right off the top. They get all the album sales. They get everything, the merchandise. They get ticket pre-sales, ticket after sales, venue. They, pay, they take money from the venues. Essentially, what I'm given is like a, a million dollars, and it's a loan, so I have to pay back the million dollars. Billion or million? Million. Million, okay. So, what about like tour merch? Don't you get some cut of that? I get nothing, man. I, I barely even get to say my name. I'm like per, allowed one per interview. Shouldn't you get money from that? Like, you should take legal action. I don't even own myself, man. My image, my commercial image. It's not me, man. No. no. How, how's that not yourself? Well, it's the, the labels own it. They, they own my, my name, my, my software, my licensing, my rights. Pretty much anything I do yeah. it falls under the character Medium J, they own. Wow. Yeah. Do you have any crimes that you've done while doing Medium J? Well, that's the, that's the beauty of it, because... I mean, I'm allowed to, uh, as a famous celebrity, I'm allowed to just kind of do what I want. Like, there's this one time me and my buddies went over to, went over to the east side, right? Where is it from, west coast? West coast. Yeah, west coast. So we go over to the east side, and we, you know what we do? We rob a fucking plane. Okay. Did you bring Halsey with you because she has a song called East Side? Who's Halsey? Halsey. Never heard of her. You never heard of her? Like GZ Halsey? No. No, GZ, who's that? You don't know the white rapper? White rapper? White rapper. Never heard of him. <laughs> no? What about um, Little Nas X? Have you heard of him, the Little new? Nas? Yeah, Little Nas. Uh, Old Town Road. Old Town Road. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's the number one hit. Yeah. Yeah. Halsey, Halsey never had a number one hit. Yeah, she did. Closer. Closer with the chain smokers. Did you hear the song Roses with the chain smokers? Yeah, that's Halsey. Yeah, th that one's a lot better than Closer. Yeah. But that's Halsey, though. I know Halsey took Roses off the number one spot, and that's why I don't like Halsey. So don't ever bring Halsey up in my name, in my... my but you never heard of her. I never, I never heard of her, but I know that song Closer. Once you said Closer? Yeah. It took, it, that was the song from the chain smokers that beat their song with the chain smokers. And she was featured on it. The Roses. No, she was featured on Closer. She was featured on Closer. Yeah. But I liked Roses better, but people thought that Closer was better because it was newer. Yeah. <clears throat> people don't understand. Take it slow, it's not difficult. That song was okay. Welcome to the interview, Medium, Medium J? Medium J, yeah. Medium J, okay. Get it right. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just a new upcoming interviewer. So, anyways, Medium J, tell us what you do in the music scene. Shit, what I don't do, man. I mean, I do things. I make videos. I write. I record. I sing. I dance. 
I once was in a broad time play. I I helped create I helped get Jared Leto into the creative role of the Joker in that new film when he was with Batman or something. Really? Uh, yeah. How how was that experience with him? I mean, it was all right, man, but Jared Leto does a lot of drugs, man. We we barely even got to the script by the time we was knee deep in cocaine. <laughs> nice, nice. Did you play some of your music to him? Yeah, I play some music, you know. He was con- he's kind of out of it though. He was kind of out of it. He was way too in that weird role of the Joker. You know, the Joker doesn't really care too much about rap. You know. How come? How come? How come? Yeah, how come? Do you know why he doesn't like rap? The Joker likes killing people. But still, doesn't he like a certain kind of music, you know? And that's what ultimately got me to do my my new album. It's called I Kill People. What's the process like with doing I Kill You? Well, it's, first of all, you, you got to get into the right headspace. What gets you into the right headspace? None other than killing people. Like who did you kill? Uh, you trying to catch me? You think I'm? You think I'm stupid, huh? Really? Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> there's this guy named Glenn Deacon in there. Fucking just tore him, tore his asshole a new one. Yeah. I I'm talking. Mm, stab while his asshole was open. I'm stabbing, in and around. Rest is history, man. I'm like, you know, some people like to shoot and kill. I'm more of a stabber. Did he, is he featured on the album? Glenn, no, he's dead. But why is he dead? Because that motherfucker owed me money. Mm -hmm. Dozens of people I've killed. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, how many, like, which people in specific? Uh... I got this one, this, this is one dude named, uh, his name was Medium K. Medium K, okay. And a lot of people were confusing us, so I just popped that motherfucker. It ain't nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, another guy, his name was uh, Big J. Big J. Big J, I, had to, I was Medium J, he kept making fun of me, he's like, I'm Big J, I'm doing big things. That's his, that was his rhyme song, this to me. So I popped that motherfucker too. Then another motherfucker, his name was Lil J. Lil J was actually cool until yes. he tried to take me out. Oh. So this self, that one was self-defense. Oh, that one was yeah. self-defense. I popped him and then I popped his friend too. You know what I mean? I went into his house and I popped his mom and his girlfriend. It ain't nothing. What did you do with the bodies? What did I do with the bodies? Yeah. That's for the police to find out and you not to know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> how many albums do you have with like features and also like in general? How many? I got like I got at least three hundred, like three hundred songs all together, probably spanned across eight to nine different uh, tapes. Uh, got a couple EPs, you know, extended plays. I I featured with a lot of artists. I featured with at least like a dozen people. Yeah. Uh, Any upcoming things that you could tell us for music? Shit, man. I mean, what can't I tell you? I I got, I got uh, shows coming up. I got. Uh, uh, well, I'm in a movie. Oh. I mean, they're filming this HBO documentary. Mm-hmm. Shit. Uh, How come Netflix didn't sign you? Netflix? Well, cause Netflix didn't pay as well. Okay. Netflix, HBO, they paid a lot more. Yeah. But they're more hands on. So mm. there's there a lot of things I can't do. Yeah. Like talk about the murder. Okay. I almost almost threatened almost threatened my boss at HBO, I told him. Started waving a gun out outside his office. Oh, yeah. it wasn't a good look. Yeah, I get not that. A good look. <laughs> what about Amazon? You could have looked Amazon, at Amazon. Jeff Bezos. Yeah. That other Jeff. Yeah. My name's Jeff. That's a good meme. That's a good joke. I'm the only Jeff. Oh, you're the I'm only Jeff. I'm the most special Jeff. Okay. If I see Amazon Bezos Jeff, I'm. A... When's your new album single? 
What needs to drop? Well, them? actually, I got this EP that's out right now for the fans. Okay. If you want to check it out? It's called uh, Two Four Four One. It's on Spotify, Google Playlists, uh, Amazon Prime, uh, Hulu. Uh, you check it out on uh, iTunes. Uh, I think YouTube Music is a thing. Uh, title. Uh, Jay Z started some, you know Jay Z. Yeah, me and him on Tidal. Check yeah. it out on Tidal if you have. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things that you can get it. It's like a hundred digital stores yeah. you can go you can go through. EP three songs, and uh, I try something different. I try singing on that thing. Ooh, yeah, nice. Yeah, gotta check it out. I guess. Yeah, do it. Yeah. So this I'm gonna is hold you to it, man. Yeah, I will for sure. I'll let you know in a week. Yeah, I'll let you know. I'll give me your email. Uh, give it to you after. Give right? me your phone number. <laughs> give me your address. Thank you guys so much for checking out this interview. This is me, MJ, everyone. Check them out on Spotify, link in the description. That's a wrap.